After months of hard fighting, the Ukrainian-held city of Bakhmut has fallen to Russian forces, led by the now infamous Wagner mercenary group. Several sources confirm that after very tough battles, Ukrainian forces made a decision to withdraw from the area of the MiG-17 monument and have taken up new defensive positions on the T-0504 road to Ivanivsky. Meanwhile, to the north, Russian forces are actively storming Kromove, the last easy access point into Bakhmut. The United States has finally agreed to joining the coalition of countries that want to provide Ukraine with F-16 fighter jets, although there are some stipulations. All of this in today's Frontline Report. So today is May the 20th, and last we spoke about Bakhmut on the 18th of May, the Russian forces had just captured the high-rise district and cut the Kromovy Road. I did not make a video yesterday, but I do have yesterday's territorial changes marked in the yellow outlined red shaded areas. This morning we got word from several sources that a large chunk of territory came under control of Russian forces. But before we get into the details, please consider hitting both the like and subscribe buttons Actions that are totally free for you to do, but are a big help for me to grow the channel. Also consider hitting the bell icon so you do not miss the next update. Just a quick shout out to those of you who have donated to the channel via Super Chat in the comments. All of the support is very appreciated. So let's talk about the current front lines, starting with the area of Kromove. Sources are claiming that Russian forces have begun forcing their way up the 0506 road and have forced Ukrainian troops out of the intersection in the center of Kromove. Should the Ukrainians want to hold the small town, which is really nothing more than a single street of houses, they will need to counterattack to retake this position. In my personal read of the situation, I think that it is more likely Ukraine withdraws from the town entirely. Supply is still difficult in this area, which could create a higher cost for holding on. Slightly to the south, Russians did manage to clear Ukrainian forces from the houses on the outskirts of town. The report suggests that Ukrainian forces have taken up defensive positions in the hedgerows of the fields immediately to the west of the city. Yesterday, Russian forces began their movement down the western side of Chakov Skogo Street, capturing a historic church and a number of private homes. They then began pushing the attack forward in the direction of the final apartment blocks and the large warehouses at the southwest corner of town. The only information we have on the fighting here comes from the Russian side, so keep in mind this might not be the most complete picture. A soldier of the Russian Wagner mercenary group claimed that the houses in this sector were all boarded up and sealed up, but special holes were cut into the walls to allow Ukrainian machine gunners to fire out from near perfect cover. This suggests that the Russian forces likely took some pretty heavy losses storming the area. The soldier claims that in order to defeat these positions, rockets had to be fired at the houses to blow holes in the walls and clear them out. The statement was also made that for every Ukrainian soldier killed in this fight, two more would show up to reinforce. This bit of information to me suggests that at least for a, a time during the battle, the Ukrainian command had the intention to hold on to this section of Bakhmut at least, at least for a little while, spending precious human resources to do so. Another claim from the Russian mercenaries was that in this final battle, the primary force they fought against was highly motivated foreign mercenaries, or what people in the West would call foreign volunteers from various NATO countries. I personally think this is where we start to dance off into propaganda land. I am not claiming that Western NATO trained citizens did not participate in the battle. I just highly doubt they did in the numbers being claimed by the Russians. A report was released by the Wagner Group on the losses of the Ukrainian side during the Battle of Bakhmut, and in this report they claim that nearly, nearly 6,500 foreign volunteer fighters were killed. Now, as an American, I see in the news every couple of weeks a report of an American death among the volunteers in Ukraine. It is actually considered somewhat big news when these events happen. In countries like Russia and Ukraine, where there are strict controls on information, casualty numbers are a huge question. Nobody really knows, nobody wants to tell, and what they 
both do tell are almost certainly a lie. This information environment does not exist in the West, or at least not to that extent. The prospect that some European country or the U.S. could hide 6,500 casualties from their population would be practically impossible, and we all know it. So that uh, is the information we have on this final battle. I did not want to dilute it, but I did want to express my skepticism over specific facts. In terms of overall casualty numbers, they are probably very high for both sides. Likely both are closer to par, but I do think there is, I, I do not think there is any value to the official numbers given by either the Ukrainians or the Russians. Both are probably pure propaganda numbers. So, zooming out and looking at the map of the Bakhmut environment, as of this moment, the Ukrainians still hold positions in the towns on the western outskirts of in Hromove and Ivanivsky. It will be interesting to see what the Russians decide to do at this point. Hromove will likely be evacuated by Ukrainians, but if the Russians attempt an attack on Ivanivsky, then this would signal an intention to move on Chasivyar. Based on the Ukrainian counterattacks on the flanks both north and south of Bakhmut, it appears like Ukraine does have significant reserves in the area, so immediately confronting these masses of Ukrainian troops and equipment might not be wise for the Russians. In this case, replacing the battered and exhausted Russian assault forces with lower tier infantry to hold the line is very likely. With that being said, I do believe that the Russians will begin to focus on capturing Avdivka next. This is a much smaller town, but it is still a significant fortified position for the Ukrainians. The Russians already have the town in a semi-encirclement, so continuing the push on the flanks and forcing the Ukrainians out of this town is certainly achievable, and the Russians could probably complete this task with far fewer resources than they used in Bakhmut. In other news, Ukrainian supporters are celebrating a diplomatic victory. The U.S. has now formally agreed to send F-16 fighter jets to Ukraine, although the exact number or time frame of these jet deliveries remains unclear. U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan made the statement that the U.S. would agree to send the fighter jets on the condition that they would not be used to strike inside the territory of Russia. Obviously, once the jets are in the hands of the Ukrainians, the U.S. will not be able to prevent the Ukrainians from making these strikes. But nevertheless, the U.S. government is looking to limit any kind of international backlash and distance itself from any involvement in if such strikes occur. The Russians are likely to throw a pretty big fuss over this move and blame the U.S. for further escalating the conflict. In Sullivan's statements, he mentioned that in the following months, Discussions would take place on matters such as the number of jets and the time of delivery. In a previous video, I stated that I did not believe Ukraine would acquire these jets before the end of the war, and based on what is currently being said, I still think that is still very likely. Finally, we will take a look at the entire battlefront to see where the major clashes have been over the last two days. We do see an increase in Russian assault actions in the area of Avdivka, along with a curious Ukrainian attempt to cross the Russian border north of Kharkiv. The Russians claim that this was a foiled infiltration attempt, but we, do, we don't have much more information than that. That is all from me on this one. Thank you guys for joining, and until next time.